So, here's the real question. How do dentists like you, who aren't willing to let insurance dictate how you will run your practice, who want to create incredibly profitable practices without sacrificing your time or sanity, how do you create the strategies to ensure your practice not only survives, but thrives in the 21st century? That's the blaring question. And Dr. Steve Shalins is here to provide the answers. Welcome to Dental Practice Freedom Radio. Hey, what's up? This is Dr. Steve Schlins. I want to welcome you back to another episode of Dental Practice Freedom Radio. And uh, it is 7.40 on Tuesday night. And uh, I'm in between coaching calls. And so um, what's interesting is I was trying to think about what I was going to talk about in this episode today. Am I going to talk about dentistry? Am I going to talk about my practice? Am I going to talk about something else? And... Uh, I had about 10 minutes before I hop on another call. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to talk about something that that, that I've really been thinking about lately. And uh, it stemmed from a Facebook post that I made uh, the other day about my work as a PGI consultant. And uh, if you guys don't know, uh, I do a lot of consulting for Bob Proctor. And he's got a flagship program called Thinking Into Results. And it's all about your paradigms and your mindset and, and uh, getting what you want in life, really. And I, I stumbled on his work a, a couple of years ago. And the reason I'm talking about this is not necessarily to have um, a sales pitch about thinking in results, although it's great. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up is, is the importance of staying on purpose and um, finding your passions, finding your bliss, and then carrying out everything that you can do t- to stay in that bliss. And this is why. Um, I wholeheartedly believe in what it is that I coach from a sales side for dentist. um, Even in my practice, utilizing those skills, I I just find it so much easier for me to communicate with my patients. It's so much easier for uh, patients to say yes, because I'm on purpose in my practice, right? Uh, When I get off purpose on my practice, if I'm doing some things, I'm just not focused on what it is that I'm doing in my practice. Case acceptance suffers. And, um, it's the same thing that happens in my coaching business and, and um, whether it's with dental sales secrets or it's with thinking in results, um, it's a little bit harder. And I'm sorry, my, my AC just kicked down. So um, if that's, that's uh, loud, I'm, I apologize. <laughs> but anyway, let me get back to being on purpose, right? That's the whole point of this episode. Now, if you're on purpose, here's what happens. Two things happen. And I, I challenge you. If you're on purpose, you have more energy than you know what to do with. Listen, if you're always tired, I'm lethargic, and I'm always beat, and I'm, I'm, I'm run down, I don't have the energy, you're not on purpose. I can tell you that straight away. That doesn't mean at the end of the day you're going to get exhausted, and you're going to hit the pillow, and you're going to go to sleep. But, like, during the day, if it's dragging, I'm like, oh, I, got, I just, like, oh, this is, this is terrible. I, like, don't have any energy. I don't feel like doing anything. I can guarantee you're not on purpose. I learned this from Bob, and it's so true. He's like, you know, when people say I don't have enough energy, you, like you have unlimited energy. Think about a light bulb. So, you know, the first light bulb that was created was a little incandescent light bulb. Whether it was Edison that invented it or somebody else, and they stole it, I, I don't know. It depends on history and who you study. But, like, let's say Edison invited, invented this light bulb, right? And um, all of a sudden you realize, like, the bulb is dim. But it's a bulb. It's it's taking like some electrical power, and the bulb is 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 showing that electrical power. What you come to find out is the only limit on the energy is the capacity of the bulb. If you build a bigger bulb, the energy flows and you have more light. You are the same way. You're that light bulb. And you have to ask yourself, as a light bulb, am I putting a restriction on the amount of light that I'm shining on a daily basis? And part of that is being on purpose. When you are on purpose, whatever that purpose is for you, whether it's in your practice, out of your practice, if there's some greater calling, whatever it is that you're meant to do on this planet or in this universe, the more in harmony you get with that thing, the more on purpose you get, the more energy that comes to and through you, that flows literally through you, you become an endless supply. And I'm going to give you a great example. My purpose 
is to help other dentists increase their case acceptance. And my purpose is to help them change their mindset so they can realize all the things that are uh, uh, available to them and wake them up. That's my purpose. And when I'm on purpose, I can go on coaching calls for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And I get up at 5 a.m. and I'm done at 11 p.m. And I'm not ever tired throughout that whole period. Now, I'm crashed when I'm done. But the energy is literally throw, flowing to and through me, whether it's on a coaching call and doing seminars and doing lectures, whatever that is. There's energy there. There's a bliss. There's a bliss state. And what happens is that even when I talk about it, I draw energy. And when I post, and the reason I'm bringing this up is if you draw energy from that, even when you put a post on Facebook or Instagram and you're on purpose, you'll actually see something happen that doesn't happen in any other post. You get more engagement, you get more comments, you get more shares, you get more passion, you get more likes, you get more loves, you get more whatever. And you wonder to yourself, why did that one resonate so much with other people? And I firmly believe that people resonate with any message if it's on purpose from the person who's speaking it. So it doesn't even matter what the message is per se. If it's on purpose to the person that's speaking it, people will naturally be more engaged to that message. And I firmly believe the more I study this, it's because there's more energy put behind that message. We naturally are drawn to energy. We'll naturally gravitate towards people that have energy. If you've ever been in a situation like that, they're like, I don't know why I like you. Like I'm, I'm, always, I'm just drawn to you. It's because I firmly believe they're acting as a conduit in which energy is moving to and through them a lot more easily. And that comes off as just being charismatic and confident and all those things, right? And so the reason I bring this up is you have to ask yourself, if I'm dragging right now, I don't have something that I'm working towards, am I on purpose? Whether it's in dentistry or out of dentistry, you have to start asking the question, what is that ultimate goal? What am I shooting for? What's driving me? What's my, as Napoleon Hill would say, what's my burning desire? Do I have one? If you don't have one, your number one job is to, to start to create, you know, what most people would say is the number one job is to go find one. And that's not true. The number one per, the number one thing you need to do if you're trying to find your purpose or your passion or that thing is go create value for others. Go create value for others. And what you're going to find is those, the conduits at which you create values for others, value for others, is going to give you energy or suck energy from you. See, I've helped others in capacities that that's completely sucked the energy out of me, and I know that's not my purpose. I'm not on purpose there. And then I've created values. Val Why do I keep saying values for others? It doesn't even make sense. Value for others, and I'm completely on purpose. And when I'm completely on purpose, I have this energy, right? So I'm creating value, and I'm actually testing my passions and my purpose based on the value that I provide for other people. I truly believe that the more value you can provide for other people, the more you're going to get in return, right? What you put out, you, you get back. And so, you know, most people say, well, I don't know what my purpose is and I got to go find it. And I'm going to go read, you know, 15 more books about how to find my purpose or my why. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not in those books. Your purpose, your passion, your mission, your vision, the, the reason you exist on this planet is not found in books. You can't Simon Sinek your way to finding your why. The only way you truly find your why is start to provide values for value for others and realize that the more value you put out, the more energy you're going to get, and you're going to truly identify your passion and what you, you truly want to contribute to this world. And so, you know, this is a big picture concept, but I really want you to be thinking about this because, you know, I see this so often. I mean, there's thousands of books about finding your purpose in life. Have you ever read those books? I've read a lot. And they're very conflicting and they're kind of confusing. Five things to help you find your passion. Five things to help you identify your why. Doesn't that just, just start providing value for others. Like, the more value you put out in this world, you're going to find what you're naturally inclined to do. You're going to find what draws and motivates and, and, and really inspires you to do more. And then go do more of that. Go get really, really good at that. As I went through this whole process in the last three years and five years of my practice, you know what I found that really motivates me and drives me and is helping other dentists increase their sales skills. Helping them get out of their own way. Helping them understand that there's more to life than the, the, the eight by 10 foot operatory that they find themselves in. It can provide so much more value. 
right? So I found that by going through all of these trials and tribulations and, and successes in my practice and failures in my practice and um, successes in my personal life and failures in my personal life, I found that the one thing that I completely continually went back to is that providing others, um, others for dentists in terms of how to increase your sales, your mindset, and even other entrepreneurs, I find that I'm most, most naturally engaged. And when I try to shut that off, bad things happen. Once you discover that, you can't undo it. You can't go back. You have to live your bliss. Joseph Campbell wrote a, I mean, if you guys don't know who Joseph Campbell is, you got to look him up, right? He talks about the, the hero's journey, right? And this idea that in all of, of mythology and all these stories, they have the hero's journey. And we go out on a path and, and we go through our own struggles and we learn stuff and we take it back and we provide it to others, right? Or we're returning back to the tribe to, to tell them what we learned. And it's through that process that we grow and develop ourselves. And so hopefully as you're listening to this, I know there was a little bit of a rant today, but I only had 10 minutes. I couldn't really think of a good podcast episode, but I hope this one was good because it's touching my heart. And I will tell you that I, I, I wrote a post, so I'm going to bring it back to the story. You might be asking, well, why? What, what about this post that you created? I created a post about my work as a Proctor Gallagher consultant, a PGI consultant. And my journey and why I'm doing what I'm doing and how I'm going back to it because I miss doing it. I miss, I miss giving that information to others. That post has like, I don't get a lot of likes on my photos sometimes on Facebook. I'm not the most, you know, friend, friended guy on Facebook, but that post probably got 30 or 40 more likes and loves than any other, um, uh, photo that I put that wasn't like a cute photo with my cat. But the second thing that happened was there's comment after comment after comment after comment. You've changed my life. And these are people that I haven't even necessarily worked with. You've changed my life. Thank you for inspiring me. Thank you for pushing me further. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. You're an inspiration to us. That is humbling. And that is being on purpose. Because when you do that, you tap into something greater than yourself. It's no longer about you. It's about the people you're serving. You got to stop being so focused on you all the time. You got to start focusing on who you're going to serve, how you're going to serve them, how you're going to contribute to this world. And uh, it's not found in a book, guys. I'm telling you, it's not found in a book. Your passion, your purpose is not found in the book. I, you know, you know what I do for my clients if they, they're trying to find their passion, their person, their true wants. Like, what do you want? What do you really want? Sit down in a room, close your eyes, relax your mind. And the first thing that pops in your head, Write that thing down. The second thing that pops in your head, write that thing down. And I'm going to guarantee you a lot of your wants are going to come up that way. They're just going to like, bam. It's not some planner that you put out and I'm going to start to really, you know, that's a dentist thing to do. I'm going to plan out what my, my dreams and my hopes and my goals are. Come on. Close your eyes. What do you want? And you're going to be amazed at how much your intuition tells you what you truly want. Your heart wants something. Go follow that. Stop making up excuses why you can't do it. Oh, I gotta, I gotta work. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. Stop doing that. Go follow your passion. I guarantee you when you do that, people will start to follow you because they want that too. They want to be following their own bliss and they're looking for others as a guide to help them go where they want to go. So that's my rant with, with Uncle Steve today. <laughs> Hope you guys got some value out of this one. As always, if you, if you love this podcast, leave a review, leave a rating. I'm seeing that the reviews and ratings are going up and uh, I, I can't thank you guys enough. If you want to schedule a free coaching call with me, uh, you can go to go.mountainskycoaching.com slash freedom has a case study about dentist and how I help dentists with their profits. But you know, honestly, you can go there or just reach out to me directly. I'd love to set up a coaching call just to get to know you, know what you're looking for, know what you're trying to achieve and see if there's any way I can help you. Um, it's what I do. It's what I'm passionate about. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm so honored and thankful that you guys are listening to this podcast and uh, I'll see you at the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode on Dental Practice Freedom Radio with Dr. Steve Schulenz. We'll see you on the next episode.